This episode of Relativity is made possible through the support of Stephen and Catherine Farris, Bill Cariola, Barry Heap, Paul Van Bremen, and Michael W. McClure, and by listeners like you, who support us and get exclusive content through patreon.com slash relativity. Relativity. Okay, that's not my imagination. Mission Control took it yesterday. I hope you're going to tell me what's happening. I'm reading the surge of activity in the habitat. Ask him what he means by activity. What what kind of activity? Atmospheric chemistry in there is behaving like, well, like nothing I've seen before. Is, is, is that what's bending and twisting my ship? Something's definitely creating stress, but it appears to be coming from inside the structure. I'm heading back to my station. Atmospheric chemistry? All right, I'm going back inside the habitat. Chris, I really think you ought to stay out of the... <sighs> Oh, who am I kidding? Relativity, episode 43, in which oxidative phosphorylation occurs. I'm at the environment hatch. Are you with me? Oh, what the hell. Go for it. Entering the habitat now. This is... I've never seen it like this. Explain. Specify. It's like there's a giant storm brewing. There are mechanisms that simulate the occasional strong winds a forest on Earth would experience. No, no, I've seen, felt those for years. This is something else. For, for one thing, it's kind of hard to breathe in here, and that's unusual. In what way is it hard for you to breathe? Be precise. I take in a breath, and I feel lightheaded, almost like I was at the... Uh, at a high altitude on Earth? You know, but I, I know I'm taking in air. I can feel it. Well, you're taking in some kind of gas, but it may not be air. We're still trying to make sense of the telemetry. Uh, the tree branches are moving. They're, some are waving, some are kind of... Well, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's like they're... I'm getting close to one now. Uh, oh, my God. The fronds on this tree are ever so slightly expanding and contracting. It's, it looks like they're breathing, the, the way an animal breathes. That makes no sense. I agree, but I am witnessing it nonetheless. Some of the textures on the, 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 the leaves and buds, they're, it's a tiny movement, but I can see it happening. Their surfaces are expanding, just like there was... A tiny, tiny balloon underneath being pumped full and then released. Telemetry says the gases in there are stable nitrogen balance, with oxygen and carbon dioxide being constantly exchanged. Keep an eye on those levels and watch for any change at all, especially in the O2 and the CO2. Roger that. Yeah, I I think you've hit on it, Sophia. It, it, It is like the trees and other plants in here. They're breathing, like always, just something about the... Exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide is different. Anything else you can tell us? Any other difference that you can see? Uh, could be an optical illusion since I'm getting quite dizzy, but the colors seem incredibly vivid. The the flowers, the different shades of green, it's, it, it's beautiful, but at the same time, bizarre. All right, time for you to get out of there. Look, if the trees are not producing oxygen, almost everything else in here is going to die. Maybe, but let's not start with you. But... Are you hearing us, Doctor? Get out of there. Can't I do something? I mean, is there some way to... To to fix this? We don't even know what's wrong. Okay. Okay, um... I'm, I'm walking back to the environment hatch. Oh, I don't like the sound of that. Neither do we. It wasn't as severe as the last one, but... And the wind is... The wind is dying down. It's... Let, let's see if it comes back up. Only if you can do it while you're walking to the hatch. Still seeing no difference in the content of gases being breathed. Nadia, what do you think about all this? I was hoping you'd ask, Doctor. But first, allow me to open the environment hatch for you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Hold it open until you are safely through. Good. Okay. And I'm through. So 
Central Computer, please continue your report. The current phenomenon is unique. I have no data on any such event in my database. Well, then you'll have to resort to speculation. First, I will offer a correction. You have spoken of breathing, but plants do not breathe as animals do. We're all aware of that. I, I, it's just a way of talking about but it. But the details may now be extremely important. Plant respiration involves glycolysis, wherein six carbon glucose molecules are broken into molecules of three carbon pyruvate. Well, yes, but that happens in the cytoplasm of everything that lives. I, I'm, I'm doing some glycolysis right now. My point precisely. And plants and animals coexist in their native environments because of that common chemical basis. Our mitochondria wouldn't have it any other way, but what, what's your point? It is possible that some outside force has interrupted the cycles of glycolysis in the habitat. Please explain that further. I am theorizing that some previously unencountered phenomenon is affecting some, but not all, of the life forms aboard the ship. Could you identify such an outside force? Negative. At least, I am not aware of any process through which I would do that. And why would you say it's an outside force? Because I can detect no change in my internal environment which could explain this. Therefore, it must have come from outside. Well, she's got us there. Marcus, gas levels in the habitat? I think the computer's right. The gas levels have never changed. But something else is happening in there. We can't be precise with our samples to test, but some of the trees do have chemical monitors on them. And the data I'm seeing from those... Well, a botanist could tell you a whole lot more, but even I can see there's something unusual happening. I'll tell you what it felt like. It was like... It was like I was mismatched with the plant life here. Like I came in and for the first time ever, I didn't fit with the larger cycle of, well, uh, of life. That is poetically expressed, but does admirably cover the facts as I perceive them. Thank you. And whatever caused this, it happened quickly enough and forcefully enough to shake the whole ship. That appears to be correct. And now it's going back to normal. Uh, apparently so. I'm seeing no stress on the whole, no more tremors or tension of any kind. You know, it's almost like... no. Yes. Go ahead and say it. It's not logical. No, but we're both thinking the same thing. It's like somebody... Was trying to get our attention. Exactly. That makes no sense. No. But why are we both thinking it? I don't know. How are you feeling? Physically? I'm fine. Uh, once I got out of there, I could breathe. Your respiration and CVEKG do look normal. Uh, thank you, Marcus. I'm, uh, but I'm going back to sick bay. I'm, I'm going to have Nadia run a total scan on me. I, I'm, I'm overdue for a good total scan anyway. That sounds good. I'm going to go offline and uh, I want to do some serious thinking. Yeah, I know the feeling. Mama, am I disturbing you? I will not try to deceive you. I am in paradise. Living in the Global Space Agency warehouse. I have you nearby. I can see Sybil over there, sleeping away in her crystal sarcophagus. It's not a sarcophagus. And here, with my pot of real tea, with a veal of water, and on the screen, all the books of the world. I have not sort of a book title yet that I could not find through this network. It's a copy of the books we sent along with spaceships. Part of the Noah's Ark idea of the whole thing. Best of humanity. It's marvelous. It's wonderful. These days, I cannot tell when you're being sarcastic and when you're not. Truly. I am truly comfortable down here. I am glad to be here. I consider the alternatives and I am glad to be here. I'm glad. I only had a minute, but I thought I'd come down and see how you are, and it sounds like you really are just fine. I eat, and it takes my mind off of other things. And that's good. We will have to deal with those other things, of course, soon. Such as what? That I tried to go to sleep and not wake up? Well, yes. And was I not provoked? Was I not given ample reason? I thought we did this. I reminded you of what you always taught me, that there is literally never a time when simply giving up is acceptable. And my grandmother's survival of the Holocaust. 
He brought that up like a secret weapon. You set off the guilt bomb. I knew it would work. It worked. I am alive. Now I am sitting down here and reading. And I will read all day, every day, and at night, I will sleep. I really and truly do not know if you're happy about this or angry. And is it not possible that I can feel more than one thing at a time? Do you think I am not capable of this? Fair enough. That is perfectly true. Well, I'm going to go back upstairs then. Say hello to your man in space for me. I will, Mama. Nadia. Yes, Doctor. I am walking to sick bay so you can do a full body scan on me. I know. You said so earlier, and I can see you now. I'm I'm making conversation. Let me state the obvious. That's a that's a human thing you can learn. I'm walking to sick bay, and that means I am going to pass Captain Sedana's quarters. Is this another example of stating the obvious? I mentioned the fact about Deepa's quarters because I am thinking of going in there again. The door is not locked. Nothing prevents you. Nothing physical, but I have an emotional resistance that has kept me out out of there ever since, well, since I found she committed suicide. I'm not even exactly sure why. My understanding of human history and behavior indicates you are responding to a cultural taboo. I don't think that's it. Your culture places a great deal of importance on the notion of respect for the dead. This includes a variety of beliefs and practices which defy logic and even common sense. Well, I can't argue with that. It's only been since the world started falling apart that human beings have finally let go of the idea of cemeteries. And yet, I keep thinking about Peter. He he killed 18 people and blew a hole in a ship, but now his body is decomposing in the habitat, and I keep thinking... He was my friend. He was a person. He deserved something better than to just lie there on the grass. An excellent example of the irrational belief system. You feel that instead of decomposing on the grass, he should be underneath the grass, where his decomposition will not be visible to you. This is not a consideration for his sake, but rather for yours. Okay, that's very blunt, and not what you'd want to say to anyone in a state of grief, but... Yeah, that's basically true. But how is this relevant to Captain Sedana? In her case, burial is impossible. Her body is tumbling through interstellar space and in all likelihood will continue to do so until the end of time itself. Tact, Nadia, tact. I keep telling you. I don't understand. We'll talk about it later. I am at Deepa's door and I'm, um, I'm going to go in. I will open the door for you. Thank you. You are still in the corridor. I'm aware of that, yes. You are more deeply influenced by certain cultural taboos than I would have expected. It, it's not just that, Nadia. That that experience in the habitat just now, it reminded me of something Deepa said. Oh, way back. Now that I think about it, it was not long before she committed suicide. Something she said? Yes, we were we were in the galley. It was a, a meal. There were five or six of us together, and we were talking about something. It, it must have been something about how the universe... It was. It was. I'm remembering now. Andre was telling us about a book that he... Mission-controlled the, the, uh, uh Hey, hey uh, I mean... Konyechnyi. You sound like you're in the middle of something. I, I am, but you'd be a welcome addition. I, I was just telling Nadia about a conversation that I was reminded of by the weird things going on in the habitat. I should add that he is standing in Captain Sedana's open doorway, refusing to go inside. I am not refusing and stop squealing on me like I'm doing something wrong. I thought the flight director should know you intend to search the late captain's quarters. I assumed you'd done it before now. He hesitates due to his early indoctrination into cultural taboos. Nadia, please stop stating your perceptions of me as if they were facts. Perceptions are not facts. But why are you hesitating? Well, I'm trying to concentrate on one thing at a time, and right now I'm focusing on an incident I suddenly remembered, and I think it's important. I understand. Here's what happened. One day, and it may have even been the day before Deepa's suicide, I... 
I was eating in the galley with her and maybe five other people. One of them was Andre, who you may remember was an omnivorous reader. And he, he was telling us about a book that he had just read, which put forward the idea that any sufficiently complex organism could conceivably be intelligent, self-aware, that all consciousness requires is capacity and complexity. The idea is not a new one. Sir Roger Penrose theorized, 60 years ago, that consciousness is rooted in quantum anomalies existing in not various... Not we'll, we'll do the literature review later. The point is, Andre said this, we talked about it a little bit, and then Deepa stood up and said, well, the trees would know. Really? Really. She said, the trees would know, and then she picked up her tiny cup of that black sludge that she insisted was coffee, and she walked up, leaving the rest of us to just look at one another and shrug. She believed the trees are intelligent and conscious? Uh, maybe? Now, if she did, we have to remember that she also believed that she was so insignificant that her being dead and being alive were no different, so she walked out into space without a spacesuit. So, uh, looking back, I had dismissed that remark as being part of her deteriorating mental state. You were right. That was an intriguing event and quite possibly significant. Thank you. And now I will defy decades of passive learning and enter the Sanctum Sanctorum. And see? I'm inside. What's the condition of the room? It's extremely tidy. That was one of her things. Symmetry. Order. Place for everything and everything in its place. Huh. Including a vertical pigeonhole for this notebook. A bound volume of blank pages of real paper. Sounds lovely. Oh, it's beautiful. A leather cover <laughs> inlaid with geometric motifs. It's the, it's the same size as the page on which she wrote her suicide note. And, yeah. Flipping through it, I can see, yes, there's a page torn out and nothing written after that. But on the pages before that, lots and lots of notes. Handwritten and maybe intended to be kept secret. Nadia, did you know about this? I did. I thought it curious because she made a point of keeping me from seeing what she was writing. Then whatever she's written in there is probably significant to the larger mystery. And I'd read some of it for you, but um, Nadia, scan this and tell Sophia what you see. Yes. Most of the text is written in Devanagari, one of the written forms of Hindi. Logical. But I do see my name written in English. My name and, uh, and one quote from a poem. I, I would have guessed it. What's the quote? Who, if I cried out, would hear me among the hierarchies of angels? Okay. Nadia, can you read the rest of it? I believe so. The captain's calligraphic skills were extraordinary. Surprising nobody. Interesting. The page you've shown me, Doctor. Is it the last one before she tore out a page? Uh, yes. Should I go back further? I want to scan the entire book, yes. But this page is interesting by itself. Uh, don't keep us waiting. She speaks of the rest of the crew in general terms and expresses regret about what is happening to them. Do you mean as in she knew Peter was killing people on board? She knew? I am uncertain. The phrase she uses is somewhat vague, but she is more precise concerning you, Doctor. Yeah? She says she deeply regrets how the events of the moment will affect you, and she says she hopes you will find the message Peter has left for you while there is still time. Say that again? She says she hopes Dr. Mason will find the message Peter has left for him while there is still time. Do you have any idea what message she means? I'm afraid not. Never mind that. What did she mean about my finding it while there's still time? Relativity, episode 43, in which oxidative phosphorylation occurs. Written, directed, and produced by Lee Shackelford. Featured in the cast were Alana Jordan. Stephanie Lindsay, Clarence Brown, and Lee Shackelford. The role of central computer Nadia was played by herself. Please rate this program and leave a comment about it wherever you get your podcasts. It helps us attract new listeners to share this journey, and find out much more about the series, including ways you can subscribe, 
hear past episodes, and connect with us through social media, and how you can get exclusive content, all on our website at relativitypodcast.com. Wi-Fi Sci-Fi. Wi-Fi Sci-Fi. Wi-Fi Sci-Fi. Wi-Fi Sci-Fi. What is Wi-Fi Sci-Fi? It's girl in space. Tales of Sage and Savant. The Ninth World Journal. Oz9. Moonbase Theta. Out. It's girl in space. Wi-Fi Sci-Fi. What is Wi-Fi Sci-Fi? Find out at wi-fi sci-fi.org. Wi-Fi Sci-Fi.